안녕하세요. 안녕하세요. Hey you. It's Italia, and I have been learning Korean for about five and a half years now. It's been a while, and I have reflected on my time as a beginner, which if you have watched my how I went from it, like beginner to intermediate in two months video, you'll know I wasn't a beginner for very long. But I look back and there are some things. One, why did I do that? Or two, why didn't I do this or that? These are all very, I guess, personal mistakes based on how I best learn. So some things that I say are mistakes might not be mistakes based on how you learn, but I mean, maybe they are. And you can learn from what I uh, consider that I did wrong. So you can learn faster. The first thing I did as a beginner that I now consider a mistake and honestly like just a big waste of time is taking like so many useless notes. So if you've watched my like tips on learning Korean grammar video, you'd know that I do not take notes. Like my version of notes is using my textbook, like having my textbook and writing like one line under the explanation or like maybe like some stuff in the margins. Like I don't take like actual notes. I don't summarize what's in the textbook in a notebook or anything like that. And this is just because of the way I learn. Cause I know some of you guys really, really like notes, but like when I started learning Korean, I was self-studying. Like I was self-studying Korean like so many of you guys are doing right now. And I went into learning Korean with this mindset of like, oh, I'll just learn Korean the way I learned Spanish and Mandarin in school, which in school we had a textbook and we had a teacher. And the reason I was taking notes in those classes for those languages was because my teacher would say things that were like, didn't match the textbook, I guess. Like obviously it was the same like concept, but they would explain those grammar structures differently and they had different things that they wanted us to focus on. But as a self-studying individual, why was I taking notes? Like my main resources for learning Korean as a beginner were integrated Korean. So these babies, extremely worn, extremely like used. Um, and then my other main resource was Korean Class 101's podcast lessons. And all their podcasts had PDF notes. And they had summary notes of all the grammar and vocabulary and phrases and everything that they taught. There was no need, I guess, to write things down. Now, I do want to mention, if you were someone that is learning through like video lessons or an actual like class with a teacher, then you will probably want to take notes. But for me, I could literally just open up my textbook because I don't, even if I do that, I don't look at it. Like I don't review whatever I wrote down. I just go back to the textbook. Now this next mistake, honestly, you probably aren't making this mistake. It's extremely personal. It's the mistake that's gonna make you judge me. <sighs> and that mistake is when I was a beginner, I just, I didn't, I didn't watch enough K-dramas and I've said this on this channel many, many times. Every year I watch maybe one or two K-dramas because I just don't care for K-dramas. Like, I, I know it sounds crazy because so many of you guys are literally just learning Korean to watch K-dramas without subtitles. Like, I get it. But for me, I don't know, I just don't care for K-dramas. Like, I don't know how to explain it. I don't like K-dramas. I don't like reality TV or like variety shows in Korean either. Like, I don't even watch Talyora Bangtan. Like, if I watch an episode, it's because I had nothing else to watch. Like, you would think if I, if anybody could get me to watch Korean TV, it would be BTS, but alas, they cannot get me to watch Korean TV. Now, I'm not trying to say if I had watched like a ton of dramas when I was a beginner that I would have advanced a lot more quickly, but it would have prepared me. Oh my gosh, it would have prepared me more for the intermediate level when you are like getting grammar shoved down your throat. Just hearing it used, even if you don't know what it means, just like helps you learn the grammar structure faster when you're actually learning it, whether that's like in a textbook, in a class, in a, podcast lesson or something like <sighs> and the reason i say this is because every time you watch a k-drama you gain anywhere between like 14 hours to like 22 23 hours worth of listening like practice and i know if you have like your native languages like subtitles on the bottom it's not as effective as if you were just listening to the korean and trying to figure it out but like it helps. If I had watched more K-dramas, then honestly my listening comprehension would have 
been better because if you think about it even if i tried to recreate those 16 to 22 hours through like my textbooks cds through listening to korean podcasts through listening to k-pop or something like that's really hard to do <laughs> like 16 to 22 hours like that's so hard to do regret number three and i know i've been calling them mistakes but pretty much like when you make a mistake usually it turns into a regret like it upgrades to a regret so i'm calling it regret number three but regret slash mistake number three is not taking advantage of opportunities to speak korean like technically this happened when I was no longer a beginner. It was, I was like low intermediate, but since it happened literally right after I finished my upper beginner like resources and everything, I wanted to mention it because it's something you need to prepare yourself for while you're a beginner. And also you could do these things while you're a beginner. After I did those two months of self-study of like beginner Korean, I flew to South Korea where I took like intermediate Korean classes and as you guys know, or as I have mentioned before, part of my like study abroad cultural exchange internship program, which if you don't know what I'm talking about, I have a whole playlist about studying abroad in Korea, costs, application, visa, classes, everything you would wanna know, check it out if you're trying to study abroad in Korea. But basically part of my internship program was to like meet with Koreans for a language exchange. Like I had to meet six to eight Korean people, the same ones every week, like they were assigned to me. So it wasn't like I was always just awkward with them or something, but I had to meet with them for a language exchange, like Korean English language exchange. And I had a Korean roommate and I had Korean sweet mates and I had Korean friends that I would hang out with literally every day. Like I was surrounded by not only just like Koreans that I didn't know, you know, cause I'm in Korea, but I was surrounded by like Korean friends that I could literally speak Korean to at any moment of the day and I just didn't like I was too shy I was too like like the only speaking I would do would be like when we would order food or order coffee at a restaurant or like something like that like I would not speak to them the only Koreans I would speak Korean to were like shop owners waiters waitresses like store attendants and Korean friends that I had that didn't speak English. Like if my Korean friend didn't speak English, like I could talk to them in Korean all day, like obviously like really badly, but like I wasn't afraid to speak to them, but the majority of the Koreans that I was hanging out with, like I said, spoke really good English. So I just didn't. I kick myself every single day. Mistake slash regret number four is not getting a tutor or a teacher sooner and this is going to be super personal to you whether you want to get one as a beginner or as an intermediate learner but like <gasps> i wish i had gotten one sooner and i understand why i didn't get one i was like N N natalia was in college natalia didn't think she could afford a tutor or a teacher but natalia could have done it and natalia just didn't do it i wish i had gotten at least like a tutor to practice Korean with when I came back to the United States from Korea, like the three and a half years of self-study, I wish it hadn't been like self-study because since getting a teacher that I meet with regularly, like I've said in my other videos, I've now been taking Korean classes through italki regularly for the past year and a half now. Guys, I have seen so much progress, it's ridiculous. Like how much could I have improved over the past three and a half years of that self-study time? If I had just gotten a tutor like so I highly encourage you guys if you're wanting to start practicing your speaking more at least look at getting a community tutor but anyway if you're a beginner looking for free resources for learning Korean I made a whole video about that down here free classes textbooks apps and websites yeah it's a master list go check it out or not it's fine but anyway I will see you guys in the next video so tell me about you guys bye